Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. First, a word from our sponsor. The Daily Compliance News for March 5, 2022, the Amazon Pushes Edition. And we begin with that story from the Wall Street Journal. And day, indeed, today, all of our stories come from the Wall Street Journal. As Amazon has moved to force the FTC antitrust decision on the MGM deal, it has proposed, or given rather, the FTC a fast approaching deadline to deliver a verdict on its proposed $6.5 billion acquisition of uh, MGM. Amazon recently certified to the FTC it provided all the information requested by the antitrust investigators. That certification triggers a ticking clock for the FTC that expires in mid-March. So good luck to Amazon with pressuring the FTC. Uh, next up, from the Risk and Compliance Journal, Mingi Sun reporting, getting cash to Ukrainians from overseas faces new sets of compliance issues. Remittances from abroad, always high, have skyrocketed since the invasion. Companies that transfer money must make sure it is not being laundered or finding its way to the Russian army, observers say. International monetary money transferring funds are continuing to operate. Uh, as uh, Ukraine is particularly reliant on remittances from Ukrainians abroad, and it's also attracting con- crowdfunding campaigns to help out its citizens. So uh, this is going to be a difficult time uh, because of the various issues that uh, Mingi raises. Nevertheless, getting money to uh, the Ukrainians is going to be uh, continued on the radar of many people. Uh, f- next up. Companies scrap IPOs amid Russian invasion of the Ukraine. Companies are putting the brakes on planned IPOs and other equity capital market transactions as investors pull back following Russia's invasion of the Ukraine. Businesses in Europe withdrew equity capital market deals totaling some $634 million in February, up $140 million from the year before. The lion's share of the transactions were pulled last week, during which companies only raised $61 million. U.S. companies are also pulling back deals uh, valued at $1.17 billion, up from $350 million the year before. So clearly uh, it's got people skittish, it's got companies skittish, and I would uh, anticipate this will continue going forward. Our final story comes to us also from the Risk and Compliance Journal, this time Dylan Tokar reporting, that Kenneth Polite, the Assistant Attorney General of the Criminal Division, uh, said in a speech to the ABA White Collar Conference, uh, White Collar National Institute, rather, that the DOJ intends to increase its focus on flesh and blood victims of white collar wrongdoing while playing greater pl- placing greater accountability on the individual executives directly responsible for such crimes. Of course, we've certainly heard this before, but... Uh, Kenneth Polite also said that companies may need to consider replacing CEOs, which is language we have not heard from the DOJ before. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.